But what are the chances that the JJK anime is gonna have a different ending than the manga? Let's talk about it. All right, first of all, massive shout out to Nitro for sending in this question today. And y'all can pause to read this whole thing if you'd like, but Nitro essentially references a few other times where animes have ended differently than their manga counterparts. And he wonders if the same could be true of Jujutsu Kaisen. And yeah, in case you guys weren't familiar, this actually happens all the time. Like animes are often different from their mangas, not only in their endings, but throughout their entire running course, right? And that can happen for so many different reasons, right? It might be because the anime caught up to the manga and they had to just go their own direction because there was no more source material to work with and they didn't want to go on hiatus, right? Sometimes it's just there was a different creative direction for whatever reason. Sometimes, like you mentioned here with Bleach, which I haven't seen for the record, but I am familiar with the process there. Um, Kubo was sick when he was finishing the manga of Bleach and didn't get to do it the justice he really wanted. So now that the anime is coming out, it's expanded and kind of, you know, fleshing out more things that maybe Kubo would have liked to have done in the original run of the manga. Similar with uh, Yu Yu Hakusho, uh, because Tagashi got sick toward the end of Yu Yu Hakusho and basically had to wrap things up. And so the anime is a bit different, especially toward the end. Now with JJK, I think we could get something similar to the Bleach situation, but I don't think we would get like an entirely different ending. Like, I don't think there would be broad sweeping narrative changes. Like, spoilers, by the way, I don't think in the anime, Gojo would come back, you know, or Tsukuno would win. Like, there wouldn't be a massive change like that, but I could certainly see a Bleach situation where we just get more expansion on things, maybe longer fights. We actually get to check in with Hikari versus Uraume, or, you know, maybe we get some Heian era flashbacks, whatever the case may be, right? Because uh, we don't know the full situation on what was going on with Gege toward the end of JJK, but it did seem a bit rushed. We know he had like an emergency appendectomy uh, that caused him to miss three weeks. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised at all if the anime got to kind of flesh those things out more, um, and just, you know, I don't want to make any assumptions because who knows, maybe this is exactly the vision Gege wanted for the manga and the anime will do the same because JJK in particular has been a super faithful adaptation of the manga so far. I would say any expansions they have done have really still been in the spirit of the show. Uh, for example, you know, the Sukuna Maharaga fight, two pages in the original manga, right? But one of the most beautiful excellent adaptations in the anime. So I would just imagine the changes we would get would be more like that. Uh, but, you know, we'll have to see. Next up, I wanted to give a shout out to Colby who just said, please help me tell the world that Kagurabachi is peak. And I have started working on my Kagurabachi series that I will be putting out on the channel. And I'm enjoying it so far, but it might still be a while because I'm trying to build up a little bit of a backlog so I can hopefully post a Kagurabachi chapter each day. So stay tuned. But yeah, so far so good. And I would recommend it to everybody. Next up, we got this from Dante and he doesn't have a question. He's just showing some love. So my guy, thank you so much for the support. Next up, we have this insanely generous donation from Grandma Tito, who also is a YouTube member. So just thank you so much for the crazy support, man. I really appreciate it. And Tito says, one thing that I would have personally really loved to see more of was how Jujutsu worked outside of Japan with foreign sorcerers like Miguel and Charles and how they would deal with curses. And yeah, me too. This comes from the video where I talked about different things I would have liked to have seen expanded on in JJK. And that type of world building I would have eaten up like it would be so cool to see just like how sorcerers and curses existed in other cultures and other parts of the world now what i will say and uh is just a reminder to everybody that the reason they were so prevalent both curses and sorcerers in japan are because of tengen's barriers tengen's barriers like optimized cursed energy and refined it uh to japan so other places in the world aren't going to be like Japan. There are going to be very, very rare sightings of curses. And, you know, the sorcerers are also going to be extremely rare. But they do still exist, like Miguel and Charles, right? So, yeah, even if it was, you know very small like and there weren't there wasn't too much to explore it still would have been really cool to explore that to any degree and then your second question is with the series now over do you think it's possible that Megami now has an open domain like Sukuna and personally no I don't uh, I don't think just because Sukuna has an open domain and spent so much time in Megami's body that that like 
gives Megami one. Like, I don't think he inherits that from Sukuna. I think that is purely a measure of skill and talent and refinement that Megami would need to reach on his own. Now, having Sukuna had possessed his body and, you know, that special grade Jujutsu been present could help Megami just in the same way it helped Yuji, but I don't really think it gets him any closer to having an open domain. Perhaps Megami will, you know, figure out his own domain and complete it quicker than he would have without Sukuna. But yeah, I, I really think that the openness of Sukuna's domain isn't something that can really be inherited like that. I do think it's just a matter of, again, skill and refinement. And then next up from Zhao here, he says, I wish we got to see more of the soldiers. It was an awesome concept. And yeah, I did like that little subplot, but I do think that it was wrapped up. And I'm not saying that this is what Zhao was saying, but I know a lot of people are like, well, whatever happened to the forces that invaded? And the entire point of that was just to generate cursed energy because uh, in some of the Culling Games zones, they kind of had become slightly more peaceful. That might not be the best word for it, but fights weren't happening as frequently as Kenjaku needed them to and he needed to generate cursed energy to fuel this merger that he was planning right so he injected these forces in order for them to get slaughtered by you know cursed spirits and stuff so that the cursed energy would continue to develop so that was the point of that little subplot but the grander subplot of the United States and the other countries finding out about cursed energy that was kind of left hanging now I guess it's just clearly something Gage didn't really want to dive into for the purposes of this um, but yeah, I mean, you obviously know that those other countries aren't just going to take that sitting down. Like, they'll probably be invading once more to try to get their hands on that precious resource that is cursed energy that they just discovered. So, you know, whether Gege ever gives us any light on that in an interview or a fan book or a potential sequel one day, who knows? And then finally for this video, we got a long one here from Bean Boy Hank, so y'all can pause to read it, but this deals with uh, Kusukabe potentially getting a domain expansion, which is something I touched on in a previous video, uh, and I don't think this is possible. I, I kind of understand where you're coming from, but I don't think you can have a domain expansion via domain amplification, uh, because like you mentioned here, domain amp is essentially an empty barrier that like sucks in an opponent's curse technique and negates it but you can't like flip that on its head and then use that opponent's curse technique against them which i think is what you're saying basically saying you domain amp absorb somebody else's curse technique and thus it becomes a domain expansion uh it's an interesting concept and i do follow the logic of how you're saying that would work but just based on the rules that like have been established in jjk i just don't think that's how it works i think it's more of a complete negation as opposed to like flipping the curse technique for your own utilization if that makes sense um and uh kusakabe and everyone has an innate domain whether or not you have a curse technique everyone has an innate domain so you could theoretically manifest your innate domain into reality, but considering you wouldn't be able to imbue your curse technique into it, it wouldn't ever be a quote-unquote domain expansion. But maybe it is possible for somebody like Kusakabe to at least manifest that, you know, I don't know what purpose it would necessarily serve, but it should be theoretically possible. Anyways, y'all, that's going to do it for this one. Thank you guys so, so much for the support even after JJK has ended. It really means the world to me, and I appreciate y'all. And don't forget, you should join the Discord if you haven't already. We got some watch parties planned in there. And also, if you're a Twitch fan, this is me over there. So would appreciate the follow if you love, you know, narrative-driven games. That's mostly what I'm playing when I get the time. So come hang out.